Hi, Mark here from American Aeration again with part three of I think I killed all my fish and hopefully you don't have to go through that. Um, in our first two parts we talked about the various things that can create mass die-offs of fish in a pond environment and uh, I think both of those both of those videos will be helpful to someone. Uh, the, the situations are varied and some are quite specific, but if it matches your conditions and your pond's uh, configuration, it, it could be a factor for some of you down the road. So it's good to know about those things, I think. This final episode, will talk about one other thing that can occur that can create mass die-offs. And that is a pond inversion or a flip of the pond. And when this happens, it creates such a, a chaotic event in the pond itself that many fish, most fish if not all, cannot survive it. So inversion happens during very specific times of the year. It doesn't happen in the winter or cold, uh, cold air conditions. It's generally going to happen in the summer months, hot conditions. Usually it's going to be in unaerated ponds. Aeration is very helpful to have to avoid this kind of thing, but without it, the pond is at risk. You usually have potentially an, a little older pond. There's going to be some mucky, mucky accumulation at the bottom. And when you have an unaerated pond in hot weather, you have a couple things happening. One is the oxygen concentration in that pond is typically going to be near the surface, and it could be very, very thin. Uh, up there, a very thin area. If you ever see fish piping at the surface trying to get oxygen, they're actually not getting it from the atmosphere. They're trying to hit it or get it from a very thin layer of oxygen in the water, dissolved oxygen. And that's all they have to work with, so they come up to the surface and try to get it there. But as you go down through the pond, you go through various thermocline layers, temperature uh, layers that get cooler to cold as you go to the bottom. So you have warm to hot on top and cold on the bottom. Most of the cold water below the surface is not well oxygenated. It's going to be very low in oxygen. And so when you get a weather event usually is what causes it. Could be high winds, it could be a hard rain, but there's enough of an agitation that the pond just flips over and all the cold to cool water comes up, the hot water or warm water goes down, and the low oxygen environment takes over everything. In other words, what oxygen you did have at the surface is basically obliterated, and the fish can die off very quickly from that. The other thing that can happen when an inversion takes place, if you have some muck build up at the bottom, you can stir up all this crap and release a lot of gases from down there. A lot of nutrients can come out of that muck. Uh, you could get a very rapid algae bloom that could also pull oxygen from the water. Just a lot of things that ultimately you don't want to have happen. It literally will wreck the entire aquatic environment in a pond and will do so so fast you can't turn it around or mitigate it with anything. So preparation is really the answer to this kind of thing and aeration is the answer. I wouldn't even say it matters which. You could go to the surface or you could go to the subsurface aeration, but having some movement in the water and some zones of higher oxygenation other than just at the surface in that very thin layer uh, can make a difference uh, between a huge loss to very little to none. So the the other thing that um, you want to think about, and I get it, I, I understand that aerators are an investment and they can be costly for people and it, you know it's it's up to you. I don't I can't speak for your budget or your interests and how important fish are to you, but I can tell you that some kind of aerator is going to be a big help in times when the weather gets tough and the pond has a risk of flipping over. So my hope with that is that you're just aware of what can happen and what can cause these mass die-offs. And Texas A&M had a paper come out where they did a study of Texas ponds and 85% of the catastrophic fish losses, uh, not just a few fish here and there, but major losses in a pond came from oxygen depletion. And so that's why we wanted to focus on some of the things we talked about here. The other thing in this paper that is very useful 
is the other things that can kill fish. Not in large quantities necessarily, but they may be spe uh, species specific losses. They may be limited losses due to weakness, uh, could be viruses, could be parasites, fungal infections, different things like that. It's, uh, it's a useful paper, so I wanted to include that in a link below so you can look that over and uh, learn from that. And I think the biggest thing, or the biggest takeaway, if you do experience a loss, is to understand why it happened so you don't have to go through the experience again. It, it, it's just a learning experience at times, and that's how you have to look at it. But uh, this information, I think, will be very helpful to many, many people. And my goal with it is just simply to to help people not experience this kind of thing. It, it's tough to hear about when you see a video or read an article on it. It's, it's just heartbreaking to lose that many fish and I don't want people to have to do that. So at any rate, I hope this information is helpful. If you have questions, you could post them below uh, in the comment section on YouTube if you like, or you can contact us at AmericanAeration.com. We're happy to help however we can. And uh, in the end, I thank you for taking the time to join me today and, and also in viewing the other videos. And uh, until next time, I hope you have a great day wherever you are.